Hey, what's up guys? Uh, I just wanted to take a couple of minutes and sort of discuss some of my initial feelings and thoughts and impressions on Fallout 4. Uh, It's the title that everyone's talking about right now. It is sadly overshadowing a couple of other really big titles that just came out. Black Ops 3, kind of sandwiched between Halo 5 and Fallout 4. Kind of unfortunate for that game. Uh, Typically I'm playing Call of Duty day one every single year, and although I definitely will be picking that up pretty soon, I have had to pass on it because I've been playing through Fatal Frame 5, Halo 5, now Fallout 4. Of course, we also know that uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider released um, yesterday, the same day as Fallout 4. Another game that I was really hoping to pick up on day one, and I could have done it, but I realized it just wasn't going to be smart for me to do so, because I was going to be spending so much time on Fallout 4, which will of course lead into Xenoblade Chronicles in just another couple weeks. So, you know, anyway, it's kind of the unfortunate fate of some of those other games, and you know, like I said, Fallout 4 is the game that everyone is talking about right, uh, right now, and rightly so, because it is freaking amazing. So typically this would be the kind of video where I'd want to have some uh, footage of Fallout 4 that I've already captured and kind of playing here. But honestly, I haven't captured a lot of footage for the game. I started to initially, you know, once I was popping it and playing it and I was getting stuff ready so that I could use it for footage on the channel. But there's something about the way that the, that the, the rhythm of Fallout 4's gameplay and the way that you experience the story in the game, the way it plays out, it doesn't really work, I think, in the kind of video format for something like how I put my videos together where it's just silent gameplay with me discussing a topic over it, even if it is related to that game, um, because it's a lot of just walking and wandering and experience the atmosphere. That, to me, is a huge part of what makes a Fallout game great. So... You know, it's just not that interesting to me, other than being really cool to look at because of how interesting the very far-off vistas look uh, in this game. I just don't think it would have made for very entertaining stuff, and I'm not, like, editing together a really complex video review, so it's not going to be that kind of thing. So you're just watching some other random video game footage right now, um, which is, you know, it is what it is. Hopefully it doesn't bother you too much. It's more what I have to say about Fallout that I hope is interesting. So, like I said, I am enjoying the game. It does have what makes the previous couple of 3D Fallout games really really great, is the atmosphere. Now, Fallout, the last couple of Fallout games, even Bethesda's games in general, get some very understandable criticism for sometimes not being the best mechanically, being very glitchy, a lot of repetitive voice actors and dialogue going on, and it's not that immersive of a story, and yada yada. Um, That part is definitely true about a lot of Bethesda's games, including Fallout's 3 and New Vegas. And to be fair, it's actually still true here. That is something that really hasn't totally escaped Fallout 4. But to me, those kinds of things are just part of the experience. What I really get excited about when it comes to playing any Fallout game and why I've been so pumped for Fallout 4 was to just exist in this world, this new dystopian Boston future, you know, after a nuclear fallout that I was really excited to just traverse and to just wander. And luckily, the game has delivered that in spades. It's easily the best part about the game. It's the number one thing I wanted to get out of the game, and it is delivering that perfectly. If that's the kind of experience that you like, if you want to feel like you're part of a world that has this great music and pacing and just a wonderful weather and day and night cycle to it so that it feels very real while you're walking through it, you're going to love it. It really makes you feel like you are the last man or woman on Earth until you, of course, run into people and raiders and you start fighting, and then you do run into towns and a lot of NPCs and stuff so that's that's the other part of course of the fallout experience and that's also here in spades and what's interesting is that's both also one of the strongest parts of fallout 4 and one of the few drawbacks that i can admit the game does have because like i said when comparing fallout to some of bethesda's other games including the previous fallouts um those games are fantastic they're some of the best ever or some of my favorite ever made i should say um but they do have that quirky element of how the npcs interact with each other and with you and it's very bland and lifeless um not just as far as like you know something silly like how their faces animate because that's never been great in bethesda's games but as far as just how stock a lot of their responses are and the things they say and they just give you quests and even the people they do kind of seem robotic Uh, and they also glitch out a lot based on how they act how they animate or what they say it's not it's not always been the smoothest, you know. And um, with Fallout 4, most of those problems are still relevant. They're still here. 
Uh, and it's unfortunate. But I do have to say the one thing is Bethesda has gone really, really far into improving it. I feel like the way the characters interact with the worlds around them, with the other characters around them, and then with you as you interact with them is far more organic and natural feeling than it's ever felt before. The characters don't feel robotic like they did. Yes, they're glitchy and they definitely don't always work perfectly to immerse you in the world, but they don't feel robotic. They actually do feel human, or at least far more human than they had in previous games. And I think that goes a really long way into to showcasing the work that Bethesda put into making a new Fallout game for this new generation. Uh, and it, it really works. To me, it works. I mean, it, it's a shame to see some of the same problems. And I feel like it's kind of showcasing that maybe with Bethesda's next outing, which we can only assume is going to be The Elder Scrolls VI, um, that they finally take it that next level and they kind of change up the NPC formula while still keeping the huge open world. I mean, I can't imagine the kind of challenge that they go through when creating these games, Elder Scrolls and Fallout and these kinds of things, um, in making a, just a map that's so huge with so many moving pieces at all times as far as who you're talking to, what that dialogue changes for other characters and other parts of the game and other parts of the map and what quests start and stop at different times. And sometimes when a quest ends, it's also starting another quest at the same time and it's tracking it all through your Pip-Boy. And there's so much shit that you can pick up and interact with in, in these games. A lot of you have played these games so you know what I'm talking about. It's insane. I mean, these games are always a monumental achievement. And because they create such that fantastic atmosphere, um, I think that's why I give the glitchiness and the bugginess and the weirdness of the NPCs such a pass. Because, hey, I mean, I can sit here and tell you that Fallout 4... uh, Fallout. I'll use Fallout 3 as an example. Fallout 3 is is very buggy and the NPCs are very lifeless and robotic and it's a huge thing that would probably hold back a lot of other games from being considered good but the other things that Fallout 3 does so well to me literally make that game almost a perfect 10 like a 9.8.9 you know out of 10 even with those problems because of the experience it's delivering is still so good for someone who might want the experience that that game is is delivering or is trying to deliver I should say And so, you know, it's really all about what you're trying to get out of these games. And to me, Fallout 4 is fantastic. I mean... It's, it's interesting. The map feels a little bit different than in Fallout 3's. It's, it's kind of like a mix between Fallout 3's map and Fallout New Vegas' map, for anyone who knows. Fallout 3 was this gigantic, huge, sprawling wasteland of Washington, D.C., where I used to live, by the way. And it's there's there's a lot of walking through nowhere, you know, through the plains and stuff and stumbling upon little random things. And it's really great, but the map feels very much, much more spread out, I should say. In New Vegas, it's the same concept, but it's a much smaller map. It's a much more condensed version and everything that you every new town or settlement or random thing or person you might run into is bunched much more closely together and that's you know for better or worse some people liked that some people didn't I thought it was fine but I prefer the bigger map what's great about Fallout 4 is it does have a much bigger map than New Vegas is much 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 bigger it's probably about the same size I would think of Fallout 3 but it's also more dense so there's more things going on which is really fantastic there's so much more to do and to see and to interact with Um, But the one kind of drawback to that is that because there's so many things to stumble upon, you really feel like everything is right next to each other. You want to find more kind of open areas to just wander and not be able to see the next building or town or settlement or or carriage or whatever in the distance right in front of you. You want to not be able to see that so you have a long way to go in either direction. Because the brilliance of Bethesda's games is even when you're walking from one place to another and you have... It's so far away that you can't even see anything in front of you. It's just like nothing. You, you'll you still run across things to, to do and to see. Like you can turn your head left or right at any given time and be like, oh, there's like a, a thing there. I don't, I don't know what it is, but I'm just going to walk towards it and see. And before you know it, you're interacting with the world in a whole new way you never anticipated. Um, so, you know, it's kind of a drawback that Fallout 4's map feels so condensed, but the good thing is it's still so huge and sprawling and there is so much to do. And there certainly are places that feel very kind of desolate and isolated and you'll still get that feeling out of it you know and as you as you can probably tell that's the thing that really sells me on the fallout experience and on bethesda's experience um the last thing i'll probably say is the the intro to the game i've only played about 10 hours of the game so far i have i have some friends who've literally put in over 24 hours of this game already in, in two days um uh the, the the intro to the game 
is not nearly as strong as Fallout 3's, which is kind of too bad. It's, you know, they tried to recreate the whole, oh, how does your vault life begin? And you actually get to start life pre-war, before the war, before the fall of the bombs. And that's really fantastic. That's a great concept. And they did execute it okay. But I don't think we spent enough time before the bombs fell to really feel immersed in the world and the story. Um, you know, there is something to be said for getting right to the important part and just sort of, you know, skipping the unnecessary exposition before the war, letting you meet your son and your and your spouse, and then you just go. All of a sudden, oh my god, shit's going down, and then you're going to the vault. And you spend some time in the vault, but it's it's nothing like how interesting and organic and natural it felt in Fallout 3, where you actually grow up in the vault and you spend time getting to know the people you're with until you have to leave. This one is a little bit different, and again, it is still very good. It's just not quite as effective or interesting as Fallout 3's. So that's definitely a shame, but... You know, like I said, the good news is with that, it does at least get you to the world much faster. In Fallout 3, I mean, the first time you play it, it's probably going to take you an hour before you probably get to the world. Once you've done it a couple times, you can do it in about 20 minutes. Um, but the first time, it probably takes you 45 minutes to an hour to finally get out of the vault, and now you're wandering the wasteland, which is all you really want to do in these games. Um, in Fallout 4, it took me probably 15 minutes, you know, other than kind of getting lost because I was dumb and trying to find the Pip-Boy that was right next to my feet the whole time, so I wasted probably 15 minutes doing that. If you remove the 15 minutes that I was pointlessly lost, it probably took me only about 15 whole minutes to get from beginning of game where I made my character all the way to leaving the vault. And, you know, I do appreciate that, even though the intro kind of lacks some substance, at least it gets you to the game faster. So, yeah, you know, like I said, Fallout 4 is just the game everyone's talking about right now. It's the game I've been most excited for this year. It is definitely delivering. There are some things that I'm surprised aren't really being delivered upon. Um, the, like I said, the way the NPCs work, it's just still a little bit, a little bit too far behind the curve. It doesn't feel as modernly updated as I was hoping. It is far better than it's ever been, and that's the most important part. It is definitely getting the job done. So that's a drawback. The intro not being very interesting is kind of a drawback. But once you're in the world. Wow, so many great things. They improved the combat and the movability big time. The gunplay feels much more... That that has the modern kind of update that I was hoping the character dynamic would have had. It really feels more like a modern first-person shooter without completely emulating the experience and still feeling kind of like the traditional Fallout stuff. Vats makes a return. It's fantastic, but it's changed in the sense that it doesn't freeze time. It actually just slows it down. So there's a little bit more of a risk-reward system than what happened in the previous games. I really like that tweak. It makes things really hectic. The game is hard, by the way. I started leveling up really fast early on, and then all of a sudden I feel like the game around me got harder, way too hard for how far I leveled up. So I'm needing to do some more grinding. Um, but, you know, it's still the best world of any game that I've played in a long time. It's a beautiful place to walk. I love just wandering and getting lost in this vast, crazy, post-apocalyptic Boston. Like, it's, it's really, really cool. The game is goddamn difficult, but it's so... So good. So, you know, it's just awesome. It's It's been fighting with another title that came out this year for probably being my game of the year so far. Xenoblade, Xenoblade is going to put up a really big fight. I know that. Right now, it's between another game and Fallout 4. And I thought Fallout 4 was going to be a clean sweep. But now that I've been playing it for a little bit, even though it is amazing and it's mostly giving me everything I wanted, it's actually surprisingly still might not be able to to edge out this other game that I've been so enthralled with this year. So we're going to see. Um, definitely you can look forward to like a top 10 games of the year list once we get to the probably the, the middle part of December and we know all the big games are finally done being released. At this point, I'm waiting for uh, I need to get my hands on Tomb Raider. And I'm waiting to play Xenoblade and Devil's Third. And at that point, I've played, I think, pretty much everything I need to for the year. And I'll be able to put together a top ten list of the games that I've played. So it's going to be really interesting to see who kind of wins the battle here. If it's if it's Fallout, if it's Xenoblade, if it's this other title, or a weird surprise, who even knows. Um, but yeah, that's going on. Those are my first impressions on Fallout. Um, anyone out there who's playing Fallout 4, definitely share your thoughts. Let me know if you agree with the things that I like and the couple of things I sort of don't like. Um, if you're somebody who doesn't like Bethesda or Fallout, you can share your opinions on that below as well. But keep in mind, I'm a massive Fallout fan, and I love Bethesda's games. So that's kind of the angle that I'm coming at this from. Also, I've been doing nothing but Nintendo content lately, which I always prefer to do, but I do like to mix it up. So I'm glad I had a reason to kind of talk about something that wasn't just Nintendo, because I've made several Nintendo videos in a row. So this was a nice change of pace. Um, so that's it. Fallout 4. It's amazing. I think it's just as good as all the praise it's getting right now. It's not a 10, but it's pretty high up there. It's definitely an almost perfect game as far as what I'm looking to get out of it. What do you guys think? Share your thoughts about Fallout 4 before below. Uh, thanks as always for tuning in, guys. I super appreciate it. This is Rob of Rule of Two Review, and I'll catch you guys next time on another video.